Hey there and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we're going to organize this backyard shed. We'll walk through the process of building this custom shelving for your totes or storage containers, and then building shelves and doing organization for the rest of your stuff so that everything has a place. Um, my wife's been wanting me to do this for the last couple years, and I finally got it done. So it actually feels really good to be organized myself, but more importantly, my wife is happy and we know where everything is. Um, I hope you find this video helpful and that it inspires you to organize your backyard shed or your garage space. And if you do need some plans, I have additional resources and uh, links to all that in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first step was for Britt and I to figure out a plan and to take some measurements. All this stuff in the shed was a bit overwhelming, but that problem will soon be taken care of. Great. I ran down to the hardware store to pick up the materials. Building basic shelving for sheds involves picking up a combination of 2x4 boards and either plywood or OSB and plenty of screws. Now, I should have built the shelving before we started filling the shed with everything, but I didn't, and maybe you haven't yet either, so if that's the case, getting started now is at least the next best solution. We got a lot of stuff. Once everything was cleared out, I swept out the shed and then took an inventory of what we all had in there. For us, we have a bed frame, strollers, yard games, hockey gear, and lots of totes with baby clothes, toys, and other stuff. I had some extra floor paint in the garage, so I decided to roll on two coats to help protect the floor and seal things up. This adds a nice touch to the shed, and it doesn't take long to do. I did some weed trimming and picked the area up a bit before getting started, while Britt worked on organizing the totes, condensing things into fewer bins, and getting rid of stuff. The shelving is being put in a 10 by 10 shed that I built a couple years ago, and I'm going to build the shelving as I go and adjust things to try and make the space as efficient and organized as possible for what we want to store. I laid out some boards to get a rough idea of sizing in the shed, and then took a look at the bin size. We got the majority of our 27 gallon bins over the years from Costco, and just a couple from Home Depot. Um, they both have pretty similar dimensions, but they do vary just a little bit, so the measurements I came up with work best for the Costco bins, and you'll need to adjust slightly to fit other brands. Once I figured out spacing that would work, I marked the boards and then began laying out the back portion of the shelf. The front and back portions of the shelf unit are built similar to how a normal wall for a shed or a room are built. There's basically a bottom plate, a top plate, and then the vertical boards or studs that are spaced in between. Now, before completely assembling the first wall, which will be the back of the unit, I placed scrap boards at the heights I thought would work well for the bins. I wanted about two inches or so of clearance between each bin so they slide in easily. All right, so here's a little look at spacing. And I think that this is going to be about the right amount. And then I'll just cut off the top so that we don't have a whole bunch of extra room and we can maximize spacing up high with some other shelving. Here's a look at the vertical boards that will form the three columns for the bins. I used two three inch long screws to attach each board and I'd recommend pre-drilling at some of the connections to prevent the wood from splitting. I stood the rear wall up and then marked the height for each of the horizontal rails that will support each bin. And it's a good idea to temporarily attach this back portion to the floor or wall while you're marking everything out. For the front wall or portion of the shelf unit, I cut the vertical boards and then marked the heights for each horizontal rail while the boards were all on the ground. This makes the process a lot easier. Then I marked the top and bottom plates for the location where the vertical boards should be attached. And now that everything is marked out, we'll be able to quickly construct the front part of the shelf using the top and bottom plate and the four studs. The front wall has the exact same dimensions as the rear wall. Simply use two three inch long screws at both the top and bottom. The next step is to connect the front wall to the back wall using those horizontal rails. Stand up the front part and attach a couple of the rails from the front to the back so you'll have a stable unit to start working on. You'll wanna use two and a half inch long screws to attach the rails. Then connect the rails at each of the marked locations. You'll use 10 rails for each column if you use five bins, and then a total of 30 rails if you're doing the three columns just like I am. As you can see, I actually put in a few of the bins already. 
make sure that everything fit and there's a nice gap between each so that you have plenty of space and then the top has a little bit more space even so that you can kind of get it in at an angle uh, which makes it a little bit easier when you have that extra room. I'd recommend getting the screws started in each of the rails prior to installing them to help speed up the process. Now I didn't invent the idea for these custom tote shelves as there are tons of people building and sharing them on TikTok and other forms of social media, but my wife found the idea on Pinterest and asked if I'd build something for our totes. So I built similar shelves but custom fit them for our shed. I added a full shelf up top and then additional supports on back to increase the shear strength and allow it to easily attach to any wall. Now the spacing is made to fit our Costco totes perfectly, but there are a couple slightly narrower Home Depot totes that we have, um, and they still fit, but there's a little bit more play, so you'll have to adjust the widths for your rails, depending on the brand you go with. So we'll move this on back, and you can see that now, left to right, it's super strong. And the other nice thing about it, now that it has these back supports, is if you are attaching it to the wall, which uh, I'd recommend doing, you can attach it easily and hit studs wherever you are. Here I'm drilling pocket holes in the support boards for the upper shelf, and you could use regular screws and toenail the boards, but if you have a pocket hole jig, it makes things a bit easier. The additional support rails are added, so the OSB or plywood shelf can be secured tightly, and so it has plenty of support underneath. Four of these supports were installed, one at each end on the top and then one over each divider. The unit was then attached to the studs of the shed wall to secure it and make things rock solid. I then added a few bins to test it out before moving on to the next shelving project. So in looking at some of the totes and other gear we have, I determined that I wanted a larger shelf on the bottom here. So this is gonna be kind of more traditional shelving. That's going to have 30 inches of clearance on the bottom and then the others will be in the 16 to 18 inch range. And that will hold all of these totes and some of the larger ones that are different brands. I measured down from the second top plate to figure out the height to mount that top shelf, but you could certainly measure from the floor up if you'd prefer. Then go ahead and secure the back support for each shelf to the wall. Originally, I had planned to go all the way from one wall to the other, which is what I'm showing here. But after building it, I decided I wanted to shorten the shelf so I'd have more room to place taller items and things like the bed frame. So if you want to go full width, definitely go ahead and do the back supports, similar to what I'm doing here. But I'm going to be modifying it in a little bit to shorten the actual width of the shelf. Now here's a little trick to make building these shelves super easy. We're just going to cut the same exact size board. And this is actually going to be the front of the shelving unit and then line it up and attach it with a couple screws. Just use a couple screws because this is only temporary. I added this scrap board on the side to act as a stop block and to help me line up the long horizontal board a little bit easier since I'm working on my own, but it's not necessary to do. The next step is to add the front vertical supports. Since my original plan was to do the full width of the back wall, I put a center support to prevent sagging since the section was so long, and then I cut supports for each end. Now these vertical support boards are six feet high and they should be attached using two and a half inch long screws. About right now is when I realized I didn't want to go the full width of the wall, so I'm simply moving the right vertical support board in about 20 inches or so. And I used a circular saw to cut through the front part of the shelf to change the width and then reinstalled the vertical board. Now I just left the back portion, but I could have cut that out as well. Once you have the vertical boards in place, it's time to remove those temporary screws I talked about earlier that hold the front portion to the back portion. Here you can see that now you have a carbon copy um, that will be the front of the shelf and it's going to match up perfectly with the back of the shelf once you connect the two with rails. My total shelf depth is about 28 inches, and so the rails are cut to 25 inches between the front and rear supports. You can certainly create and modify your shelves however you'd like, but just make sure to have plenty of supports so you don't have shelves that sag over time. 
I measured for the shelf depth, which was 28 inches, and then it's 93 inches in width. Set up a nice big work surface out of a couple saw horses so you can cut your OSB or your plywood. And I'm using a cut hub workstation in today's video. Uh, then transfer your measurements to the sheet and then snap a chalk line or use a straight edge and a pencil to make your cut lines. Then go ahead and cut the OSB down to size using a circular saw. I'm using 5 8 inch thick OSB because it's plenty durable for this type of shelving and it's much cheaper than most plywoods at the time of this build. I like to mark where each rail support is before putting the shelf on so I can make it easy to ensure the screws go through the OSB and into the support when attaching it. There's a good chance you may need to remove a support or two in order to slide in your plywood. If you're working in a small space like a shed, I removed the center and right vertical boards so I could easily put the sheet of OSB into place for the lower and middle shelf, then reattach that vertical support at the corner. With the smaller shelf width, I decided to get rid of the vertical center shelf support as it frees up some space and I think it's going to be plenty strong without it. The top shelf was cut and then it was time to secure the plywood for each shelf using screws around the perimeter of each sheet and then at the rail supports place 24 inches on center or whatever spacing you went with. I also did a shelf over the tote storage area to help maximize storage space up high. We filled up the shelves to see how things were fitting and what additional storage needed to be built and then moved on to a shelf above the window area. I increased the height of this shelf about three and a half inches so it rested above the window and a nice thing about putting shelves in an unfinished storage shed is you can build off the existing studs in the walls. Now blocking or additional studs can easily be added to secure the shelving and align the boards with other shelving that's already been built or to build the shelves a custom width that may not align with one of the existing shed wall studs. For this shelf, I cut about a 45 degree angle on each end to create a bracket support instead of doing a straight vertical board all the way to the floor, which will give additional space to store or move around items below the shelf. The front of this shed is the tallest, and so I wanted to take advantage of the space by putting one last shelf over the doors. It needed to be higher than the tote storage area so that the totes can still be slid out. I was able to attach a rail support to the top of the tote storage unit to hold up the shelf on that side, and then I finished framing up the shelf. Now the other side of the shelf is secured to a rafter to strengthen and hold it up. I cut and installed a couple additional boards to use for shelf supports for the shelf on the window side and then for the shelf above the door. The OSB for these couple shelves was laid on and attached with screws. I used a couple pieces that were left over from cutting the other shelves. Then I made a slight modification to open up the area below the shelf. Instead of doing that angled bracket I had put on earlier, I decided to attach the corner of the shelf to the rafter above it to help hold it up. I ran a sander over a couple rough areas and edges, and then the shelves were complete. Okay, so here's a look at the shelving before everything goes in. This is a three section shelf unit that will hold 15 bins that are all from either Costco or Home Depot. Here's your more traditional shelving. There's three shelves right there. Did a shelf above the window, another shelf above the door and then a shelf that goes over this uh, bin unit. So let's go ahead and load it up.
All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found today's video helpful, and I hope it inspires you to go out there and to organize your shed or your garage and to build some shelving. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's a good weekend project, and it doesn't cost that much, and it's going to make everyone in your house a little bit happier, just to have things organized and in place. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you would like the plans to do these shelving units um, or need additional resources, check out the link in the description below. All right, thanks again for watching. Cheers. Teamwork. All right. And everything has a place now. Where, where am I going? Bye-bye hey. to you. Hey. Bye-bye to you. Bye-bye.